We're talking about Michael Pratt of Tulane on QB1 with Christy Foy. This is a quarterback, Christy, that you've had the chance to see recently and assess. What is his skill set? What should people know about Michael Pratt that they don't know already? I think this is a true dual threat quarterback that caught a lot of attention whenever he nearly led his team to a upset victory over number two ranked Oklahoma and really did everything in his right to win that game. And he was going up against the number one quarterback prospect and honestly, the number one prospect in the country in regards to the upcoming draft there and then outperformed him. And so I think he caught a lot of attention there, looked really good there, but then played the majority of the rest of the season injured and then just doesn't have a lot of eyes on him anymore. This is a quarterback who's extremely mechanically sound, very accurate, has a really strong arm, and I really don't think there's much he can't do as a passer. The stat line is not indicative of that because of how poor the offensive line and the supporting cast were last year. Uh, but I think this is quarterback who can, is really fast and can beat you through the air and on the ground. And I think that just not enough people are looking at him right now. So that performance against Oklahoma, in your mind, based on what you've seen, not a flash in the pan? No, absolutely not. I think whenever we look at this quarterback, because quarterback evaluation, people want to look at it, and they always seem to, even when they're not trying to, factor in the rest of the performance of the team. I mean, this offensive line could not hold for two seconds half the time last year, and then the supporting cast was just really thin, and I had some questions about the play calling was just kind of questionable last year. But whenever you look at Michael Pratt and Michael Pratt by himself, I think that he's done a good job. I think he's done the best with what he's had. And I think that people will go back and watch the All-22. And if anyone wants to actually show up to camp and go watch uh, how he looks when he's healthy, I think that they would change their minds and start talking about him a lot more. You know, it's such a good point that you bring up because so many quarterback rankings, I guess, live or die based on some of the other pieces that they can't control. I mean, how much have you seen that be the case? That you've got a young, talented prospect who, for one reason or another, whether it be offensive line or, like you mentioned, play calling, um, is ultimately affected by that and assessed in the wrong way. Yeah, I think so, because a lot of people don't want to go back and look at a small school quarterback who has – uh, somewhere around a 57% completion rate because the numbers are not going to do anything for you. The rest of the two-lane team last year, now they're very improved, and the rest of the team has looked really good during camp as well. But nobody wants to go back and look at a losing team that finished at 2-10 and 10 last year, and it's just not the popular thing to do. And so I think that a lot of people have trouble looking away from the fact that this quarterback was so badly injured and some weeks barely practicing last year, and they just can't look past that. And then from the political perspective, it's not – very popular to put a quarterback up in the rankings until someone starts talking about them. And I was actually uh, telling the Tulane SID about this when I was out there. I said, well, maybe if we keep uh, saying it enough and I keep saying it enough, keep, other people will start saying it. And then surely enough, a few days after that, CBS has Michael Pratt as one of their like dark horse <laughs> candidates to become um, a first round draft pick. So it was just kind of funny of a coincidence. Yeah, well, you know what they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So maybe they're following you and they realize, hey, you know what, we need to give this guy a second look. Um, but, you know, in terms of his stat line being misperceived, how much of that had to do with really truly injury as well? I mean, it seems like this is a player who will now have a chance to prove what his ceiling is and what it's really been all along. Yeah, well, injuries affect the quarterback's mentality. They affect their ability to move, and they impact throwing mechanics and lower body mechanics. So that's pretty much everything. That covers all the bases right there of everything that can go wrong. And so when you have a player that has to play hurt or has to play banged up at least, which I was under the impression he did for basically the entire season, things are going to look a little bit off. And if you go – and I did this. I mean, I went back through the All-22 last year and then went out to camp myself – and saw almost all of these issues pretty much erased. And I think it had a lot to do with that. How much of a riser could he be, Chrissy? And what have you learned from him personally in your conversations with him when you've been out there in person, in the field, watching him play? Um, you know, what, what do you think his ceiling is? I think this is a quarterback with an extremely strong mentality who has the full backing of his team. I think his coaches are excited about him. I think everyone who's laid eyes on him in person is really excited about him. So I think he has a really high ceiling. I think that if he can stay healthy and his offensive line can protect him this year, it's not, I know it's not popular to say right now, but it's not out of the picture that this could be an early round quarterback. If people just give him a better look and if he does consistently produce this year the way that I think he will. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more QB1.